Blessings. I'm back for part two of Hell Within, ladies. All righty. We're going to get right on into it. On the first one, you know, we talked about, I'm just going to do a little short summary. On the first one, we talked about um, um, that Christians can have demons and we're not possessed. A Christian cannot be possessed with like the English word. We, we describe what it means um, to be oppressed by a demon. And we discuss, we, we um, talked about the soul the and the mind, the body, the will, and emotions. And we... Um, discuss some other things but anyway on this part we're going to finish up and we're going to um just start talking about uh, the body we're going to start talking about the body and i know people may say well i don't agree with her i don't agree with this really i don't care if you agree with me or not i don't do my videos for people to agree with me or not to agree with me because i really don't care i do these videos because there is some woman out here if it's nothing but one woman hallelujah that needs to hear the word of god the unadulterated word of god i'm not gonna sugarcoat it i'm not gonna water it down but i'm gonna give you the word because if it's just one woman out there that needs to be delivered today, that may be going through right now, praise God, that's tired of religion, that's tired of going to, to the building week after week and can't get no help, that's tired of going through all of this and, and being in the, you go from place to place and it's like things of the world. So I do these videos for that woman, if it's nothing but just one. So if you don't like it, you know, you don't even have to watch it, praise God. Hallelujah. It's not about you agreeing with me and me agreeing with you. It's not about that. It's about the word of God being preached that a soul might be saved, that a soul might be delivered. Hallelujah. The angels rejoice over one. I want to see not more. I want to see way more than one soul, not just saved, but delivered. We can be saved, but we can live down here being saved and not be full of the Holy Ghost and not walk in the power, not walk in the deliverance that God has for us. I want to see the women of God walk in power. I want to see the women of God being delivered, being free. Hallelujah. The captive set free. I'm captive in my mind. I'm captive in my spirit. We may not be behind bars, praise God, in the natural wearing a striped two-piece outfit. But Lord God, we are in captive in our spirit. Spirit, we're captive in our mind, praise God. We need you to free us. And the word of God says he came to set the captives free, praise God. Glory, hallelujah. He has anointed me. The anointing destroys the yoke. We don't need no yokes broken. We need them destroyed because anything broken can be mended back together again. I want to see some yokes destroyed, praise God destroyed out of the women of God's lives hallelujah that you can be the woman of God that he has called you to be you don't got to walk around being pretty on the outside posting scriptures on the Facebook and empty and toe up on the inside but you can walk this walk that you talk and you can walk it in peace you can walk it in love praise God you can walk it in joy the joy of the Holy Ghost for the joy of the Lord is my strength <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we're going to talk about the body. Different parts of the bodies can be the dwelling place of certain kinds of spirits. For example, stubbornness and rebellion can lodge in the neck and the shoulder area. Spirits of lust can dwell in the eyes, the hands, the abdomen, and any part of the body that has been yielded to sexual sin. Any part of the body that has been yielded to sexual sin. Spirits of mind, control, and confusion will naturally dwell in the head area because, you know, that head area, that's where your brain and your thoughts and this, you know, is so. Spirits of mind, control, and confusion will naturally dwell in the head area and pride can lodge in the back and the spine area. And I know a lot of people who have a lot of proud demons. I do. I do. Proud demons. And spirits of infirmities can lodge in the body. And healing for the body is directly tied to deliverance. It is deliverance. That's something we are lacking in the body of Christ now. We're lacking deliverance. People, I say, I, I remember looking on TV, seeing crusades of people go, oh, we had this many thousand, this many million to get saved. They came to the altar. They came crying. And when they showed the passion of the Christ that year, folks went to the movies and 
<clears throat> and watched the movie and went up to the altar and weeping and crying. And then the next week they are right back out there doing the same thing they've been doing. But anyway, that was in the emotions. That was emotional. That was getting you worked up in your emotions. It Oh, that was so sad what they did to Jesus, this, that, nothing. But then after a week, you right back to doing the same thing. Ain't stunning what Jesus said and did. You can care less because I'm doing what I want to do. This is my mind. It's my body. And I do what I want to do. But uh, anyway, back to this. The spirits of infirmities. Okay. And um, the spirits of infirmities must be cast out before healing can take place. We're going to look at some scriptures. Uh, we're going to look at uh, Luke chapter 13, verses 11 through 13. And it says, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed together and could in no wise lift up herself. Do you see that the word of God called this a spirit of infirmity? Do you see this? So you see a lot of people walking around bent over right now. And a lot of them, that is a spirit of infirmity. But we just been told, well, it's the way their back grew in. It's the bones and this, that, and the other. But we see the Bible calls it a spirit of infirmity. It's a spirit. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. Now, see, that goes back to a lot of people. I don't believe you have to lay hands on people. All you got to do is preach the word to them and they'll get delivered. You are lying the truth ain't in you. The Bible tells us too to lay hands on the sick. He said lay hands and they shall recover. Is that not what he said? Lay hands. It's some action. You got to do something. Not just preaching to people. It's not going to get people delivered. It said here. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. Now you see, that's the word of God. That's not my opinion. That's not what I think. But we get so many stories up in up when we go to what we call church today. Moses did this. Moses is dead and gone. I'm still here. I need a word for right now for what I'm dealing with. What what Moses dealt with and what happened to Moses, I that, that ain't that can't relate to me, hallelujah. But I need some help right now, God. I'm right here in, in this century. I'm right here in 2014, God. I need help with my circumstance situation right now. Glory to God. All of this. God made a way. He did this. Yeah, he sure did. He made a way. But God, I, but, but preacher man, preacher woman, I need help right now. I'm, I'm, I'm sick in my body right now. I got AIDS in my body. I'm just using this for an example. People come with AIDS. People come with, with, with syphilis. People come with herpes. People come with all of these different diseases. Even though we know that you may have been out there fornicating or doing whatever you're doing and you got these diseases or you may just got AIDS through a blood transfusion. Or uh, Anyway, but this is a sickness in your body. This is a disease. This is an infirmity, praise God. But when you come to Jesus, huh, glory, he can heal, he can deliver if you believe. But the problem with the body of Christ today is we limit God. We leave out the part where he can heal, where he laid hands, where he cast out demons. We leave that out. And we go to the whole oh, money coming to me now. What good is it going to be able to have all this money in the world, fine cars, fine house, and your soul is hell bound. Your mind is tormented and you can't sleep at night. Got a jaguar sitting out in the yard. But your soul is doomed to hell. Be, and you can't sleep at night. You have to take some sleeping pills just to sleep. Because you're stressed out. You're worried. You're bogged down. What good is some money coming to you now going to do for you? But we serve a God that can heal, that can deliver. And it says here, he laid his hands on her, praise God. See, I'm ready right now. See, he told us, he said, call for the elders of the church. If there is any amongst you that's sick. Oh, I hope you. Oh, I don't know if y'all feel what I'm feeling right now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. said, if there's any among you sick. See, some people ain't, ain't sick with a disease. Some people so sick. Hallelujah. Some people, like I said, can't sleep at night. Some people got a tormenting demon that they can't sleep at night. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory out of our shot. But. But the Bible says call for the elders of the church. Yes, Lord, anointing them with oil and lay your hands on them. 
and they will be healed. They shall be healed. He didn't say they might. He didn't say that, that, that I think about it. He said they shall. See, I don't know what about y'all right now, but right now, mm, thank you, Jesus. I can feel the power of God because God want to heal. He want to deliver his people. He want to manifest his power to his people. He want to manifest his power. We see so much of the devil's power around here. But all we see in the, what we call the church is entertainment. All we see is some praise dancing and this, that, and the other. You, and I tell young girls all the time, I don't have anything against praise dancing. I really don't. My little girl, you know, used to do a little praise dancing. I, I mean, I really now, I don't really care for it, but you know do a little praise dance and if that's what you do with that's what you do but what good is it for you to get up there and jump around with some tights on wearing them for pants looking like a straight hoochie but anyway we gonna go back on but even if you wear a skirt or whatever you wear i just had to throw that out i don't know what you're thinking about when you're talking about you praising god up there in some tights with fat rolls everywhere your breasts hanging out and tight t-shirt you ain't praising my god my god is holy and you look like a hoochie so anyway we're going to back up. You need to be in a, a rap concert or a rap video because your show ain't praising my God, not looking like a straight whore you're not. But anyway, we're going to get back. The older women should teach the younger women. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the older women are just as bad as the younger ones. But anyway, I had to throw that in. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But anyway, we have gotten away from the power of God. We don't see no power of God move. We go to church week after week. And see, everybody else noticed it. Some people notice, but they sit there, well, we'll just pray. I ain't going to just pray. I'm going to say it. Preacher get up there preaching the same thing all the time. He ain't studying. He ain't laid out before God. He ain't saw God. He done been running around doing whatever he was doing all day Saturday. Wasn't studying you. Wasn't studying your soul. And he just living it up and doing whatever he want to do. Then grabbing the Bible because he done been to theology school and writing out a little sermon and typing it up, whatever. And then get up there and give you a bunch of bull crap. And you just sit there. Spoke up in there talking about they praise dancing. They done, they done listening to the world, jumping around, shaking their fat tails and everything else. Nobody says nothing. I will. It is an abomination to God. It's a disgust. And that is not church. Well, we're going to have worship service. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And your spirit is jacked up and it's not holy. It's not sanctified. It ain't You ain't trying to be. And you don't like the truth because somebody like me come give you the truth. You shun me. You talk about she don't show no love. She this, she that. No, you shun the truth. You can't even be saved. The Bible says you can't even be saved. You don't have the love for the truth. People nowadays don't love the truth and they hate anybody that come forward with the truth. You got to get out of this church. You got to get out of here. You're not part of us. You hurt our feelings. You this, you that. That's why now all you got is a building full of sodomites. And, then, and for any of you all who don't know what a sodomite is, it's a person that, that does oral sex or, or anal sex or anything. I don't care if it's two men, two women, whoever, husband and wife, you it's oral sex, it's sodomites. We got a bunch of sodomites. We got a bunch of unclean, unholy spirited people trying to run behind the box, trying to preach to somebody else. Ain't, ain't delivered, ain't Holy Ghost filled, ain't saved, don't live nothing. You got Ursha standing at the door that shack and fornicate, lying and doing any and every disgusting thing. You got folk calling themselves Sunday school teachers. What are you going to teach people? You done just left a bad woman with, with your boyfriend laying in the bed after y'all done laid up and had sex all night and he won't marry you, but you go put on a white dress to my you or Ursha and stand at the door. Or you go try to teach Sunday school to somebody's children or better yet to some adults. You a lie woman, you a truth and you, the truth is not in you. You don't got the, your spirit is nasty. You need to get delivered. And get filled with the right spirit. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The spirit of God. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory to your name Jesus. The spirit of God not going to move. All this disgust up in the building. All of this unholy stuff. All of this. All of this willful sinning. Willful sinning. You like what you're doing. You like shacking. You like having sex and not being married. You don't want no man to commit to you. Because you don't want to commit to no man. Because you like doing what you're doing. Then guess what? You're not saved. You're not saved. And I'm going to say, well, the Bible says that 
You don't judge another man's salvation. How is that judging your salvation? I don't even know you to judge it. First of all, second of all, I'm telling you the word. And I'm telling you the truth. Whatever you take, whichever way you take it, I could care less. But it is what it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The truth shall make you free if you want it. Oh, glory to God. It said, and he made straight and she was made straight and she glorified God. And I think back to myself, praise God. I say in that world, fornicating, hallelujah. Fornicating, doing my thing, doing what I wanted to do, praise God. Glory. Glory, hallelujah. Having sex with somebody that, that don't love you because if a man love you, he won't do the very thing that was that will that will uh that will doom your soul to hell, and that's fornication, because fornicators have their pardon on the lake of fire. That's not love, woman. That's dooming your soul to hell. Cause you're not gonna go to heaven. I don't care how much you sing in a choir, I don't care how much money you pay, I don't care what little women's group or men's group or whatever you over. If you are fornicated, the Bible says you will not inherit. You're not going. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's why we don't see the power of God flow right now. Ha! Huh? I grew up as a little girl. I remember going to church with my auntie. I was a little girl, probably about maybe five, six years old. I don't know how I remembered it, but I know the Bible says the Holy Ghost shall bring all things back to your members, but and the Holy Ghost shall lead you and guide you to all truth. But I don't, you know, I don't know. The Holy Ghost just blessed me to remember this. I guess he said, you better remember this because you may never see this again. But anyway, we will. But uh, I'm just had to throw that in for a little sarcasm. But uh, I remember seeing this woman, I mean, seeing the, the power of God flow in this church. Hey, glory. Oh, thank you. Demons coming out of people. All oh, coming up through the floor. Blessed or oh, sweet smell aroma of the Holy Spirit coming into the place of fog. Oh, fog thick. You know, if you ever opened up the refrigerator or freezer, them big old freezers, you open it up and all that fog come up. That's how it was in that building. Oh, the fog come up in the church. The Spirit of God shall come our glory of the Lord. Deliverance was taking place. People just being delivered. Demons was cast out. And I'm sitting there like five, six years old looking around like, what? You know, what in the world is going on? Got to go to the bathroom. I almost fell. Look down. Touch the floor. Oh, coming up out the floor. Oh, thank you, Jesus. But now, you go to these buildings, all you get. 15, 20 minutes of entertainment. The man up there talking, sweating down, ain't saying jack. You come up in there full of hell, you leave full of hell. Everybody is there. Everybody just jumping and shouting and hypocriting around, and the children go up and do their little dances or whatever worldliness. And there's just no spirit of God there. Period. Nobody says anything. But guess what? I will. My God, I got power. My God is a deliverer. And my God is a healer. Praise God. He wants to heal us. He wants to deliver us. He wants to manifest Himself. But He's not gonna come somewhere that He's not wanted. Another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4. And that's what we have right now, what we call church. People have received another Jesus, and they preach another gospel, and they receive another spirit. And when the real Jesus come on the scene, you get offended. You get offended. When I come preaching the truth, preaching the word, you don't. I don't like her. It ain't you that don't like me. It's that demon in you don't like me. And let me address that demon in you right now. I don't like you, demon. And yes, you know who I am. Have you come to torment me? Yes, I come to not torment you, but cast you out. Because I got the power. I give you power of all sickness, disease. I give you power to cast out the out demons and devils. That's what the word of God told me. And I got the power to cast you out, Satan. Thank you, Jesus. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It ain't that woman that don't like me. I don't know. I just don't know. It's just something about me. Yeah, it's something about me. That demon inside of you know that I got the spirit of God down on the inside of me. And I got the power to lay my hands on you and cast him out. So he going to keep you far away from me. Because he like dwelling in you. He like controlling you. He like you going through religious acts and doing religious things. But just don't get delivered. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hey, glory. Thank you. Stay far away from her. Far away from her. On another thing I want to speak on right quick, 
the word oppressed is the Greek word. Now, see if I can pronounce this word. I'm not very good, but I'm going to try. Katadonastia. Katadonastia. Which means to exercise dominion against. In other words, spirits of infirmity are exercised dominion against certain parts certain parts of a person's body by casting them out we destroy their dominion and see the person set free and healed we got to be casting them out we can preach to them all day long didn't you just hear what the word told said he jesus laid his hands on jesus was the word he had the power to speak it and it had to happen but he said he laid his hands what you think we gonna have to do many believers have not seen the close connection between deliverance and healing but if we study the ministry of jesus we see him ministering Healing to the sick and by casting out evil spirits. Did he not do it? What is wrong with the body of Christ today? Full of demons and spirits unlike God. Need deliverance your own self, but you up behind a pulpit because you don't went to college, the theology school and got a doctorate degree, preaching the letter. But the letter, but the letter kill it and the spirit give it life. And you have no spirit of God and you can't give life to anybody. So you're just up run running your mouth. And you're dead, spiritually dead, and you can't help nobody. Hallelujah. Luke 4, 40 and 41, and I'm going to close this on down. Now, when the sun was set, and all they that had any sick with diverse diseases brought them unto him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. It didn't say some of them. It said every one of them. Hallelujah. He didn't turn none away. And, the, and devils also came out of many crying out and saying thou art christ the son of god and he rebuking them suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was christ though those demons inside of you know who who, who they dealing with that's why that little feeling jumping up inside i don't like her oh what she's saying it's tough it's this that's some demons in you don't like it and that's them demons know that i gotta keep you away from her because you'll get delivered you will get healed i gotta keep you away from her I don't care about you talking to so-and-so so so-and-so ain't got nothing. She can't help you. She can gossip, lie, and talk with you and do all whatever she do. Y'all can sell chicken dinners for the church, all this. I, she, can't, she can't cast me out. But just stay away from that woman right there. Just stay away from her because she can detect me and she can cast me out. How about shot it is? Glory to your name, Jesus. And Jesus was ministering to the sick through the land on of hands. Evil spirits were manifest and he would cast them out. We need some casting out of some demons right now, women. Some of y'all so bogged down and so so drenched in, in, in sin and so drenched in hurt and rejection and pain and so many demons. You need some demons cast out. You need some deliverance, praise God. You've been walking around here wondering, I've been reading the Bible, I've been trying to read my Bible, I've been trying to hear the truth, I've been listening to these recordings that, that, that Shonda doing and this, that, nothing, and it's all true, but you listen, but ain't nothing you can do about it because them demons inside you got you captive. They got you captive. Them demons got you captive. You can sit and listen to the truth. You can take all the notes. You can say amen. All of that. But you sit there and can't incapacitate it. You can't move. You can't do anything that you know. Well, I, sh I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but I just can't do it. You have not been born again. You don't have the Holy Ghost. And you need you have demons and you need deliverance. What good is it to hear the truth, but you can't act, you don't act on it. You're just sitting on the sideline, like in a football game. You sit on the sideline and never get to play in the game. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Mark 3, 10 and 11, and then I'm going to close this down. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many had plagues. What is plagues? Plagues is an any affliction or calamity to vex or torment are you vexed today in your spirit woman are you tormented today in your spirit and in your mind you have a plague you need some some deliverance hallelujah you have a plague and unclean spirits when they saw him fell down before him and cried saying thou art the son of god them demons know who they know and see when when you've been sent to and i'm gonna say this and then i'm gonna close out and I see the devil doing this to many a women. 
God will put women in my path. And they'll be with me for a while. And as I begin to minister deliverance to them, and as they begin to grow in the Lord and they begin to get delivered, I see the enemy come in slowly. Slowly. So he don't do it quickly. He slowly, progressively do it. Pull them away. Don't go around her. You don't need to talk to her. Don't call her. Let her call you. Don't do this. Don't, don't, don't talk to her. You can pray for yourself. You can read your word yourself. If she want to talk to you, let her call you. You don't need to talk to her. And he pull you back and pull you back. And before you even know it, you sitting there hell bent. Hell bound. When you need to go to a doctor, God put people in your life for a reason. When you, you, every one of us ladies listening, you go to, a, to the doctor for a checkup. You got specific doctors that you use. You even call them your family doctor or whatever. You chose that doctor. You chose that doctor. And see, God has special people and women that he'll put in your life that can minister to you. That can lay hands on you and cast demons out of you. That can take you and teach you and to take you to your next step, to your next level, to get where God is trying to take you. Now, when you was out there in the world, when you was going to these religious and traditional churches, you was faithful to it. You was faithful to that, to it. But they couldn't help you spiritually. But then when God placed you under the real, you sit there. You're incapacitated. You can't, you can't comprehend. You don't move. You don't do anything. You let the devil come in and pull you away. Stop all communication. If she don't call me, I ain't going to call her. Well, guess what? You think that doctor care? You the one need the doctor. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm nothing. I'm nothing apart from God. And without God, I can do nothing. But God put women in your path for us. I've seen him do this. I've seen the devil do this. Pull them far away from me. And all I can do is say, Lord, I put them in your hands. I can pray for you because God don't force itself on you. And I sure ain't about to. If you need help, where do you go? You go to the doctor if you're sick. If you need help, if you need that sister in the Lord, because the Bible says, bear you one another's burdens. If you, you need that sister in the Lord to pray for you, if you know that that's the woman that God put in your path that can help you, that'll pray for you, that love your soul, you know she's going to give you the truth. I, for y'all women who don't know me, I'm going to tell you right now, for those who do know me, I'm going to give you the truth. The truth will make you free. I ain't going to tell you what you want to hear. I ain't going to pat you on the back and tell you it's going to be all right. No, it ain't. And if you got a demon in you and you want help, I'm going to cast him out. That's why the devil keep you away from me. That's why the devil keep you far away from me. Women, I pray that something that I said today bless you. And I want to let you ladies know, I have a prayer line, a teleconference line that I'm doing. And on this line, it's not just a prayer line, but it's a prophetic line. Sometimes on there, I may prophesy to some of you. Sometimes on there, I'm going to give you a word or I'm going to teach the word. And then I may pray. But I don't know. This, this teleconference line is a prophetic line. It's a spirit-filled led line. It only flows by the way the Holy Ghost lead me to flow. Maybe another woman on the line that God may use her to flow. But this is a teleconference line that's prophetic. It's not programmed. I don't have no written out sermon for you. I don't have no this and no that. All I have being led by the Spirit of God. So I don't know which way he's going to take us and how and when. I just don't know. But this teleconference line, if you ever want to be a part of it, women. I want This line is for women who want deliverance. This line is for women who want some help. That we come together. We receive a word from God. We receive direction. We receive encouragement. And we receive deliverance and prayer. And we encourage one another, strengthen one another, and we move forward. And we receive a word from God. I'm not telling you to get on this line. I'm, I'm just telling you about the line. You get on it if you want to or if you don't. You get on it if you want to or if you don't. And all I can tell you is this. I don't ever say anything to people about this teleconference line. I'll let you know that it's available if you want to be on there. It's just like, like um, anything else you go to or do. If you want to be on there, 
guess what? You'll be on there. If you don't get on there, that's you. That's your loss. You go do whatever else you want to do. There are no excuses, old man. They are inexcusable. So I prayed. I said, Lord, whoever these women are that need to be on this line, let them be on this line. If don't but one woman get on this line, then that's who you want on this line. If don't no women get on this line, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to get on it. I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to be on it. But you know, I have this one faithful lady. One faithful lady. She's always on there. Looking forward for that. And I thank God for that because that goes to show her perseverance. That goes to show she really wants something from God. I don't ask her. I don't beg her. I text her the, the information. And she's on there every every Tuesday. Soon as I click in, I hear that little bell thing. That's her. And she works a hard working job. And she if she have to pull on side the road at 7 o'clock p.m to call this this line she do it and then get back on the road but she's gonna make sure that she's gonna do everything with them and that's somebody who really a woman who really want god and that's the type of women i want on this line that's the type of women i want on this line i'm ready to go and i'm ready to take some women that's ready to go with me oh thank you jesus and the number is you are dial 712 432 one two one two that is seven one two four three two one two one two and your access code and meeting id number is eight three three dash three oh two dash three oh three and when you dial your median ID number in, you just dial all straight numbers. Don't hit no commas, no dashes. Just dial 833-302-303. And it's going to tell you to press the tic-tac-toe button. It's going to say the pound key. That's your tic-tac-toe button. And I hope and pray. And I'm on there every Tuesday. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Every Tuesday at 7 p.m. And I hope and pray that you all are able to come on the line. I would love to talk with some of you or some of you all that watch my videos. I don't know you, but uh, I would love for you to come on the line, receive a word from God, get prayer, get some deliverance, get some encouragement so that you can press on and be the woman of God that God has called you to be. And if any of you all want to um, send an uh, email to me or ask me any questions, my email address is our lowercase Lashonda L A S H A N D A Williams nine o seven at gmail dot com. I love you in the Lord, and may the Lord continuously bless you and have a blessed day.